Masturbation is a common practice that many regard as safe, with endorsements from scientific and medical communities highlighting its benefits. However, from a faith-based perspective, it's essential to recognize that masturbation is considered a sin, carrying significant spiritual risks similar to other sinful behaviors. Some Christians might argue that masturbation isn't explicitly condemned in the Bible, but today's video explores the harmful consequences of this act. By the end, you'll understand why masturbation is indeed a sin and the adverse impacts it can have. This video is part of our series, The Bible and Sex. Be sure to check out our first upload in this series, What Does the Bible Say About Oral Sex? If you find this video helpful, please like and share it with anyone who might benefit from this message as you never know who might be struggling with issues related to masturbation. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insightful content. Societal Views on Masturbation In today's society, masturbation is often regarded as a safe method to prevent sexually transmitted infections and unintended pregnancies. Many Christians have accepted this idea, along with the belief that this sin is not addressed in the Bible. However, they overlook the fact that abstinence and sexual purity provide the same protection, ensuring safety both physically and spiritually. A pastor once heard a group of young people in his church claim that masturbation was not sinful. He asked if he could pose a question, and they agreed. He asked, Jesus was a young single man while he was on earth. Have you ever considered whether he practiced masturbation? They replied, no. When asked why, they said, because Jesus was morally pure. The pastor then smiled and pointed out, if you believe Jesus was too pure to engage in masturbation, why would you think it's not harmful? The young people were left speechless. Biblical Perspective From the Old Testament through to the New Testament, the Bible consistently addresses sexual immorality. It is very clear on this matter. Masturbation involves self-gratification sexually, which deviates from God's design for sex. God created sex to be enjoyed within the boundaries of marriage. Let's explore what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 1-9. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, as a concession, not a command, I say this, I wish that all were as I myself am, but each has his own gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. To the unmarried and the widows I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am, but if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. The guidance here was that people should avoid marriage, but due to sexual immorality and the lack of self-control, marriage was advised. If masturbation were beneficial, it would be recommended, but the Bible indicates that sexual relations should occur between a man and a woman within marriage. Masturbation is not presented as an alternative. Paul even advises married couples to have regular sexual relations to prevent Satan's temptations. He says that neither spouse has control over their own body. What does this imply? Does it mean that individuals cannot satisfy themselves? Paul reiterates in verses 8 and 9 that he prefers singles and widows to stay unmarried, but they should marry if they cannot control themselves. Hence, the Bible suggests that the only permissible way to seek sexual pleasure is through a spouse. This is God's plan for sex, and this is how sexual pleasure should be pursued between a man and a woman in marriage. Doing it any other way is considered sinful. Consequences of Masturbation Masturbation has numerous consequences. The world typically highlights only one negative aspect, which is addiction, and often downplays its significance compared to other addictions. 
Not long ago, a prominent journalist was suspended for masturbating during a Zoom meeting. If this were truly harmless, it wouldn't have led to such repercussions. Therefore, some of the risks associated with masturbation include, firstly, the possibility of losing your job, as evidenced by the true story mentioned. Masturbation is not something you want to be caught doing in any setting. Secondly, you might lose your spouse, as masturbation is a sexual act that can leave you feeling satisfied, potentially affecting your marital relationship. Spiritual and emotional impacts. Negative impacts on spiritual and emotional life. Besides professional and marital risks, masturbation can also negatively affect a person's spiritual and emotional life. One of the major spiritual consequences is a distancing from God. When a person indulges in uncontrolled self-pleasure, they are seeking satisfaction in something other than God. This can create a spiritual barrier, making it difficult to seek God with a pure and sincere heart. The practice of masturbation can also lead to the construction of sexual fantasies that do not correspond to reality. These fantasies can distort the person's perception of interpersonal and sexual relationships, making it difficult to form and maintain healthy relationships. This dissociation between fantasy and reality can result in unrealistic expectations and ongoing frustration. Impact on sexual purity and relationships. It is also important to consider the impact of masturbation on the concept of sexual purity, which is highly valued in the Christian faith. Maintaining sexual purity is seen as a way to honor God with the body, and masturbation, being an act of self-satisfaction, goes against this idea of offering the body as a living and holy sacrifice to God. Often masturbation is accompanied by the consumption of pornography, which has its own devastating consequences. Pornography is highly addictive and can lead to a distorted and dehumanizing view of sexuality and relationships. Moreover, it promotes a form of sexuality that is completely divorced from love and commitment, which are essential in a Christian marriage. Dependence on pornography and masturbation can also lead to social isolation. A person may become increasingly reclusive, preferring instant solitary gratification over investing in real and meaningful relationships. This can result in a life marked by loneliness and disconnection, which is the exact opposite of what God desires for us. Strategies for overcoming masturbation. For those seeking to live according to biblical principles, it is essential to develop strategies to combat these habits. Seeking support from faith communities, establishing regular practices of prayer and Bible reading, and seeking professional help when necessary are important steps to overcoming the struggle against masturbation. Finally, it is important to remember that God's grace is available to all of us. Even if someone is struggling with masturbation or any other form of sin, God's grace and forgiveness are accessible to all who repent and seek transformation in Christ. The path to recovery may be difficult, but with God's help, it is possible to live a life of freedom and purity. Seeking a Christ-centered life. Masturbation, seen from a biblical and spiritual perspective, is more than just a physical act. It carries a series of implications that can affect an individual's spiritual, emotional, social and physical well-being. Recognizing the impacts and seeking ways to overcome this habit is essential for those who desire to live according to God's principles. By pursuing a life centered on Christ and striving to maintain sexual purity, a person can experience a deeper and more fulfilling relationship with God and others. Take a moment to check out the two videos displayed on the screen. I encourage you to dive in and engage with them. Remember, the journey of learning never ends. Thank you for watching and may God bless you.